Okay, today we're going to be breaking down open interest and diving into the nuance around this tool. In this video, we'll be covering what open interest is and how to read it, covering the differences between time and non-time based applications, covering opens and closes, lightly touching on aggregation. We will break down the difference between high and low liquidity markets, and we're going to finish it up with time and variance. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into things. Okay, what is open interest, commonly abbreviated as OI? So open interest tells us how much given value there is currently open on a contract, meaning when we read open interest is currently $1 billion on the major Bitcoin perp, that means that there's $1 billion worth of longs and shorts currently open. So when a position is opened, it is always one-to-one -one maker and taker. So here we have a simple example to depict that. We have the two participants needed to facilitate a trade, the taker and the maker, for this example, we're going to be the taker. So we mark it by one BTC on the major perp contract. When we do this, the total open interest on that contract will appreciate by one Bitcoin. Okay, how to read open interest. This is the simplified approach. A lot more of the details around nuance will be woven in later in the video. So this is the simple schematic that you want to drill into your head. If price goes up and open interest goes up, that tells us that longs are opening. If price goes up and open interest goes down, that tells us that shorts are closing out. If price goes down and open interest goes up, that tells us that shorts are opening. And if price goes down and open interest goes down, that tells us that longs are closing out. Um, the higher the time frame, the less accurate this data will be. I always recommend using one minute and uh, aim to don't not use any of the higher time frames unless you absolutely have to. Okay, here we have a simple price chart on the one minute time frame with open interest at the bottom. We're going to use this to depict a couple of simple ways for how to read open interest changes. So let's get into it. Um, first off over here, we have a steep open interest drop off and price dropping off in a corresponding way, which tells us that longs are closing out. Over here, we have the opposite where open interest is closing out as well, but price is trading up, which tells us that shorts are closing out. And then lastly, we have a very steep drop off over here where OI goes down and price goes down, which tells us that massive longs are closing out. So this simple schematic that we just covered will have pretty high accuracy as long as we remain on lower time frame. Once you get into the higher time frames, so anything like 30 minutes and beyond, um, the variance uh, gets too high in my opinion. Okay, let's cover time frames as well as non-time based. So time-based without a doubt is going to be the predominant data type. Uh, this is what you're going to run into with most of the order flow software by default. However, I'd like to make the argument that the non-time-based will give you more reliable data. So my preferred options are things like trend reversal, range or vol, tick and volume. So the default that I go to nowadays is always trend reversal. If I don't have that option, depending on what platform I'm using, I'll look to things like tick and volume most of the time. So with time frame, the lower the time frame, the more accurate it's going to be by default, because as we move up in time frame, we aggregate the data together, which ends up resulting in less data. Um, so this can be great when you need to zoom out and look at a bigger picture. But most of the time with this open interest data, you need to be looking at that nitty gritty detail that you're really going to be missing as you zoom out. So um, closing thoughts on this are basically higher time frame open interest really makes little sense to me most of the time because it ends up being largely theoretical. Um, when you're looking at a daily chart with open interest, sure, people will make arguments around how you have big open interest buildups and it gets wiped out and so on and so forth. Um, but you really have entered into the realm of, you know, theoretics at that point, And you're no longer really making data back decisions, in my opinion. Um, so open interest stuff really needs to be reserved for the lower time frame. Let's cover opens and closes. So opens and closes will allow us to contextualize the delta in two different ways. Um, first, the way that we've already depicted. Um, so if you see a lot of negative delta coming in, understanding whether that is longs closing out or shorts opening up is the first key piece. And the second piece, which is going to be more reliant on using a proper footprint, is to see where in the candle is that delta taking place. Um, the aggro or force closing of a position will almost always result in the best reversion setups. So here on the screen, we have a perfect puke and open depicted um, where as you trade into the lows, um, the spreads get blown out. 
um, starting off the back of, you know, normally it starts with a close and then it open, but it doesn't have to be a perfect script. This option is doing the opposite where we have a close following an open. Um, so we aggressively trade down a short for whatever reason decides that this is the time to open up. Um, spreads get blown out off the back of him opening that up. Um, you revert back down and retest that region again where you see a very large long end up closing out uh, with all this negative delta for confluence and this leads to a perfect mean reversion setup back towards the mean. Um, definitely note around the spreads getting blown out, this is one of the key pieces. This doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the OI but it serves as a great piece of open uh, of confluence when using open interest. Um, so in the TREV candles, when you see them going back and forth really quickly, um, that is the representation of the spread getting blown out. When you see it in real time, it's pretty obvious because of how quickly your screen is going to be moving around. If you're not there watching when it comes, um, how you can identify it is with the timestamps. Um, so basically the timestamps that are taking place here will be very, very small and grouped up together. So there's basically no time spent here. This process happens very quickly and the reversion happens. Uh, immediately and if you were to look at a time-based candle this would be a wick going to depict three quick examples on the exo template we can see here how one positional change can cause a cascade effect causing other positional changes so on the left side of the screen here we have a large long puke we can see open interest going down rapidly guy got scared and closed out over a 2500 bitcoin long which caused these spreads to get blown out and drag the entire market down with him you can see all the negative delta coming throughout the candle um, we can see how this causes the cascade effect because there was more longs getting closed out longs getting closed out here and then very large longs getting closed out here um, which leads to the reversion where shorts end up getting closed out on this side um, so we can see how um, aggressive closing outs will um, blow out spreads and um, cause a daisy chain effect where longs will force other longs to close out, which ultimately will end up leading to the best reversion, um, which on the other end of the spectrum ends up forcing shorts out eventually. Okay, let's cover aggregated open interest. So the TLDR on this is that it makes sense to use aggregation because of the fractionalized flow in our space. This just allows for less room for error when we just combine everything together. Um, next thing is between stablecoin and coin margin. Um, if you're going to choose between the two for what to look at, um, always default to stablecoin, especially with altcoins. Um, coin margin contracts have steadily declined in market dominance for the entirety of the time I've been in crypto, and I expect that to um, continue in that trend. Um, so Binance flows are the dominant platform. Um, the majority of flows in crypto are flowing through Binance as of early 2023. Um, so it's important that we factor that in um, when we're using aggregation. Um, understand that Nance basically is a massive part of that weighting. For more information, check out the Paragon group with the link below where I cover everything from how I trade to how you can develop your own style. Okay, and finishing up the presentation with the most important topic of all, time and variance. So this is the main argument that I'd like to present here today. It's simple and it should always be considered. Increased time equals higher likelihood of misinterpreted data. What I mean by that is following a piece of useful flow Every X amount of time that goes by, the value of that data is decaying because more and more pieces of information are coming into the market and they're resulting in that information being less important. So we should act quickly and move on to the next play. There's a major difference between decisions that are driven by data and data interpretation that is driven by our decisions.